Hey everyone, Sari here, and welcome back to another week of Astra Season Offense Matches. After three straight weeks of Edelgard-focused teams, she finally got to take a break and let other people have a turn in the spotlight. Most of the matches this week went to Claude. It's been a while since I used him in my offense matches, and I did pick up a merge for him a few months back. The gravity effect of Fallen Star is an extremely powerful tool for controlling the battlefield, and the damage reduction half of the skill combos nicely with his weapon's null follow-up, to let him pick off almost any unit he runs into. While Harmonic Catri is more commonly seen on defense teams, using her on an offense team unlocks some really interesting options. The mobility from her orders buff is actually the more valuable of her effects in a lot of situations, though the extra firepower from triangle attacks is a great way to delete even the bulkiest opponents. Having an extra denser thanks to Mirabilis' bonus week really helps unlock the team, giving them a variety of options for navigating the map. Claude ended up sharing the week with a couple of other teams, too. Morgan made an appearance in one of the matches this week, taking advantage of a variety of sabotage effects from his teammates to enable his weapon. He's using Close Counter in Astra Season instead of his usual foil, since Cirrus is a fairly common sight on anima defenses. Panic Smoke, as usual, is a great way to let him exploit the defender's visible buffs, and Soul typically outpaces Noontime as a heal, since he doesn't have access to special acceleration. Using Gunther is a great way to enable Morgan. Her remixed Chilling Seal hands him easy access to minus 7 penalties, and is especially useful once teams are spread out and aren't getting sabotaged anymore. She also takes advantage of those debuffs herself, and being green lets her deal with any blue opponents that might give Morgan a hard time. The extra sabotages on the team are mostly for consistency. While Gunther does a lot of work, it's very possible she'll miss a key target due to the positions of the enemy team. Asher and Naga also have a really easy time soaking shrines and chills for Morgan, since his visible stats are fairly low. The last team I used this week was a bit experimental, featuring a melee specialized legendary Corrin backed up by Fjorm. Being able to ignore ranged opponents lets Corrin use a unity skill instead of distant counter, giving her an extremely powerful edge in offensive stats. Shield Pulse remains a great way for her to enable negating Fang, but I'd like to experiment with other options at some point. Null follow-up would be a really great skill to learn instead. Fjorm's kit is mostly the same as usual, but I decided to use the new Darting Breath for her seal while Corrin got to keep Mystic Boost. Losing the extra healing can add up over multiple combats, but being able to ignore enemy guard effects is an extremely valuable tool for her. One unfortunate coincidence here was that Fjorm and Corrin actually share an attack speed total, which did make it a bit tricky to juggle the bright shrines. Now that we've gone over the teams, let's get to the first match. This match will be a fun way to start the week, with a return to Claude and Catria. They've got a pretty impressive plus 10 legendary Hector frontlining their team, but he is actually out of season this week, and I wonder if they forgot to update their anima defense for the current week, since they also have this e tree in the back. They're still pretty spooky even without the bonus stats from Mythics, but losing all of that doesn't help. And their Happy is also using Astra Blessings, so she's not getting the stats either. The only one who is is the Duo Peony. And sadly, the bonus week Ceres is in the seventh slot, so that doesn't actually help mitigate their lift at all. The Weaponless Mirabilis on the front is a an interesting choice, I do think that her weapon's actually very useful, especially combined with some of the other in-combat penalties from someone like Eitri. But it does stop you from beating her out. And then they've also got Duma, who combines with their level 9 catapult to almost always guarantee that bolt towers get destroyed if they're in these middle columns. But there are some pretty spooky threats here, Eitri and Happy are both very strong if they get a chance to attack. But they're not really taking full advantage of Hector Zosti's pulse, since both of the dancers being flyers means that Eitri doesn't actually get the effect, unless one of the dancers gets sniped. And Happy's only using her default glimmer instead of a 3 charge special, which she'd be able to fully charge thanks to her weapon. So there are some improvements that could be made here. I'm not expecting to have too many problems with this, it should be pretty straightforward overall, and yeah, should be able to close it out without too many issues. We're going to just start by using Kanto and Katria to 
test this first trap. Found the real one. Sure thing. That lets Quadge move up and break this other structure. We'll have Mirabilis jump over. Dance Catrio. To be by his side. We can break this one. Why not? We'll have Lunaria move up here. To get in position for next turn. It will be we'll let Naga move up here. There Asher move up here. Future. And say go. We're all out of range here, so the safety fence will lock things out. And we're not going to worry too much about triangle attacks on this turn, What's since this? all we're going to do is move in and snipe the dancers. Mirabilis is a very easy target here. Close and Peony nice. is not going to get anything... isn't going Let's to go. survive any better than that. Ha! From here, we've actually gravitated all of the team that can actually move more than one space, so which means that this tile, right but where that Claude is, is safe, sure and thing. we can just dance him one more time and have him move over and one-shot Duma. We also have Quads active at this point, Leave. Now. but he's not going to need more than that first hit. Then we'll yes. just move Naga forward and start opening the path towards CC through pots. I am the answer. Move Naga up to buff Claude for next turn. Not my first and have Katria move up as well. And we'll just enemy phase E tree. Who can do a lot of damage and is now getting that Osteous Pulse. But she's attacking into Fallen Star and well no follow up means that she's never going to be able to threaten Claude. And from there, they just move slowly around. From here, we just want to make sure we pick up both pots before closing things out, and that shouldn't be too hard to do, since Let's Pot go. shouldn't have too many problems and may face him happy. There is so, one future. we'll just have Ashra open up this healing tower. Oh, I'll do it. Dance her with Plumeria. I am the break answer. this first pot. Naga break design? the second pot. Sure thing. And then we'll have Claude break through Saros. I won't back down. He doesn't need two swings. That introduction does a lot. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have Mira move forward. And with happy gravity, we don't really have to worry too much about her. Reaching anyone we don't want her to. What's this? So we'll just work on Hector instead and enemy face happy. Ha! Ready or not, here it comes. And down goes Hector. Wait we'll just let Catria move in and re-enable triangle attack for a non-existent fourth turn. Happy does a lot. Not giving up. But again, 80% damage reduction is a bit too much to handle. Down she goes. This match will be an interesting one. It's been a while since I saw dedicated Kathleen. They can still be pretty spooky if you don't have the right units, especially a good far safe armor to tank their, your way through them. And this team has a solid spectrum of color coverage thanks to this duo Corin. Duo Leaf, and their maxed out Reinhardt. Along with this legendary Lulina, even out of season, she's a pretty major threat. They have two dancers as well to train to make sure that their calves get in range of something that they can knock out. And Sarah's in the back has the seventh slot. Enabler. This one actually took me a little bit to plan out, since. We don't have a third dance for Claude here, which would have made things a lot easier to clean up. Which means that he's going to end up actually tanking quite a bit of damage in this enemy phase. I just hope that I've planned this out correctly and that he survives. Yes. We're going to start by testing this first bolt trap by flipping Catria forward. It's fake. I am We're the going answer. to smite Claude over to the right. 
that What's lets this? him jump all the way forward and knock out Corrin. From there, we're Wait going to me. flip Plumeria forward and test this heavy trap, which is also fake, so all of these extra antics weren't necessary. So then we're going to have Mirabilis jump forward and dance Claude, which importantly debuffs their entire team with attack, which is going to help Claude a lot in this enemy phase. Let's go. He's going to move over and knock out Mirabilis here. There, ah. Mirabilis. I actually ended up having to sit back and think a little bit since I forgot to update my calculations for Claude's merge and expected him to have a lot less res than he has right now, which would have gotten him sabotaged by Lena and would mean that dancing oh, him from this oh, time, with Plumeria, would not end well for him in the enemy phase. But now that we do have that merge, sure thing. we'll be fine. And we can just have him move over and quad leaf, while also gravitying Reinhardt and I Seeker, which will force them both to attack him next turn. Now, tanking multiple enemies in one round, especially one with a brave attack like oh. Reinhardt, isn't something that's usually too good of an idea for Claude. Hold a grudge if you must. But thanks a lot to Mirabilis's Dream Flake. He's not actually going to take a whole lot of damage in this enemy phase. And can just casually take out two of the remaining threats. I actually forgot to mention it, but the reason we went in on the first turn is because this catapult sniped our safety fence, so we actually had to engage on the first turn for once. What's this? Here things are going to be pretty straightforward, we just need to pick up one ether pot. Dance Claude. Let's go. Have him re-enable Fallen Star by one-shotting Lolita. Leave now. Mm -hmm. Then we'll dance him one more time. And What's just this? move him forward to block Zeros and enemy face her. Not my first and we'll work choice. on getting Ashra it will be done. out of this corner. There is but one Break this future. offending catapult. And wait one more turn to close out the match. <laughs> no follow up means that Sarah's never really threatens him, and we can just tank this with Fallen Star pretty easily. Yes. And then we can just flip Ash her forward. Yes. Let her pick up this pot. And then we'll have Claude close out the match. Leave. Now. And down she goes. That was a fun one. Let's see what we get next. This match was one that I was hoping to make the highlight of the week. They have a really impressive defense team with almost the entire squad having full merges and highly invested levels of tracking flowers. And it's very hard to engage on this safely thanks to the threat range of Sigurd and Hector covering the most accessible parts of their front line from being attacked. And it's also very hard to tank this thanks to the triangle attacks from Katria, but the remixed Lin is very annoying to try and tank thanks to the impenetrable dark effect she has on her weapon and the sweep effect that she has from her remixed A skill, especially when she's also being backed up by a duo leaf. I did end up planning this out and having a working strategy to beat this, but unfortunately I messed up slightly on the starting positions of my units, and ended up not having Mirabilis and Naga standing where they were supposed to be. If I had flipped them around here, Naga would be getting an orders buff from Katria, and that ends up being very important <laughs> to hit and run from this properly. I did play out this first turn without it, just to demonstrate what I was trying to do. And after we move Claude forward here, thanks to a reposition, Ashra can move in and take down Hector before Claude takes out the Seeker. 
but without an Order's buff, Naga can't jump over to flip Claude out of the threat range, which means we don't get to take advantage of the safety fence. This match isn't quite the match that I was hoping to have for today. It actually ended up goofing on the first shot and mispositioned slightly, which cost me the match since it was a very tight opening formation required. This one's still going to be interesting, though not quite as incredible as I was hoping that one would be. They've got several very highly invested units here, including Maxed Out, Gunther, and Legendary Robin. And this plus 10 Ike in the corner. This is a very impressive Ike. It's a bit sad that they just stuck him in a corner like this, but he is a little hard to knock out, even though he can't necessarily be proactive. And then, of course, they've gotten Legendary Krom and Legendary Lolina rounding out their team. But the Ceres in the corner as well isn't actually doing anything for their lift loss since she is the seventh unit, and the team as a whole doesn't really take full advantage of her since they have a Legendary for every season. The unequipped Dorothy is a good way to try and make sure she doesn't attack instead of dancing but you also lose out on her chills by removing that weapon, so... Well, positives and negatives. I'm not expecting to have too many problems with this, fingers crossed, since that last match was a little unfortunate. We're going to start this just by flipping Mirabilis forward to test this bolt trap, which is fake, it's fine. What's this? Well, it's going to move here, and get danced by Plumeria. And then I smite him forward to test this heavy trap, which is real. Also fine. Let's go. Here, he's going to snipe the Selena. Then we'll dance him. And take advantage of our safety fence sure to just pull back out of range. Not my first flip Naga choice. down and move Catcher forward a tile. And say go. And since we're all out of range, nothing happens on this first turn, and we get another round to continue marching through their team. There is and but we can one just future. swing Claude forward. We found a real crafty trap, so this is a safe move, and let's Claude just Claude down Robin without taking any response. Which is important, I don't want him to get damaged before we start on the psych. Then we'll just have Plumeria jump forward and dance him. We'll let Naga desire? move forward and enable triangle attack for this combat with Rom. He doesn't end up needing it, but it's better to be safe. You don't have as much time as I'd like to plan this one out. And then we'll have Mirabilis dance him. And move him forward to take down Gunthra. Ready or not, here it comes! And Dorothy is not going to be able to get anything done, since even if she does move over to Ike, this is air orders and not guidance, and won't let him escape his little corner. Wait and then we'll me. just move Catria forward to re enable triangle attack for next turn. Say go! Let's and from go. here, we'll just pick off Dorothea to get rid of that rain. That a and start working on Ike. To be we'll have Catria move up here to enable triangle attack, and then let Claude go to town. And he actually is going to manage to knock the psych out in one round. Leave. Now. 80% damage reduction is a lot, but you do still take some damage. Why not? And we'll just have Plumeria move up and secure one ether pot. The gravity means Cyrus isn't yes. catching us here. And we'll flip Asher forward. I am the and answer. not break the second ether pot so that she doesn't reach Plumeria. Alright. And then we'll have yes. Asher break the second pot. 
Let's Let's go. I'll close out the match. Oh, that's pretty straightforward. I won't back down. Let's see what we get next. This match should be an interesting one. They've got a couple of very highly invested units here, starting with this maxed out Brave Hector. This build's a little interesting, using Bold Fighter and Ignis to try and make him a player face threat, and Armored Boots gives him a bit more mobility to help accomplish that. But without guard or any kind of defensive options, he's a little vulnerable to just being sniped in the player phase. They're backing up with this also maxed out Duo Leave. Not the first one I've seen this week, but he's still very impressive and not something that you really want to try to tank. A lot like this Hector. That Ignis hits very hard if it gets to land. They've got Duo Lin enabling their hindrance and just being a general pain to handle. I've started seeing more of her on defense teams lately, which is interesting. I do think she's a very solid threat, and not someone that I really like having to plan around when tanking. They also have this Fallen Edelgard in a corner, who doesn't really get to contribute much to this fight until they're ready to deal with her. And then they round the team out with a bonus week Saros, Thraceer, and a Mirabilis for some dances. The good flyers helps boost Lin a little more than people might be ready for, and can help her secure knockouts or just survive count an attack by avoiding being doubled. I don't think I'm going to have too many issues here though, this should be a pretty straightforward match. And we should be able to close it out pretty quickly. I'm going to actually get things started on the first turn here. Claude's going to move forward, so we'll dance him, and there smite him forward future. onto this heavy trap to test it. It's fake, that's a good thing. It will be done. We're going to flip Plumeria forward here, and then we're going to take What's advantage this? of the gravity effect from Fallen Star to have Claude oh. snipe Lin and drastically limit their options for dodging our safety fence on this next turn. Oh, and we can I'll just dance it. Claude, to move be by Catcher side. forward one space, which Let's enables go. triangle attack, and lets him just absolutely destroy Hector. Leave. Now. Down he goes. This also means that we don't have to worry about being engaged on, since we're out of their attack range for this turn. And there aren't any follow-ups available. This turn's actually a bit more annoying than I'd like, since we know this heavy trap is real. But we should Let's be go. able to make this work even with that. We're just going to move Claude onto it and trigger it here. And we'll have Catria flip Mirabilis over to the right, and then move up a bit. Close your We're going to let Plumeria dance Claude. Sure thing. And then we'll let him move in and knock out Leaf. He does get to take a counterattack here, and the damage reduction penetration of Leaf's weapon means that some of that damage actually does stick, even through Fallen Star. Hold a grudge if you must. But it's not enough to threaten Claude too much. And from here we can just have Mirabilis jump forward and dance him one more time Let's go. to let him move over and knock out Thracier. He is going to end up tanking both Ceres and Mirabilis here, but Ceres should always attack him first, since she does more damage, and then Mirabilis shouldn't really be yes. able to do much on the follow-up. Yes. We'll just have Naga move here and let yes. Ashra jump all the way forward to break this tactic room. Cyrus is never going to be able to reach anyone else other than Claude here, so we don't have to worry about it. And Mirabilis is also gravity, so she can't actually reach Cyrus to dance her. Cyrus attacks, but she can't do too much damage to Claude thanks to an unmitigated Fallen Star effect. And Mirabilis actually goes after her winter self instead of going after Claude there. Sure From here it should be 
pretty straightforward to have Claude knock out Saros. Ready or not, here it comes. And dance him. Let's and go. have him knock out Mirabilis, which also helpfully recharges Luna ahead of his fight with Edelgard. Mm, and I'll just let Catra pick up the first pot and move into an able triangle attack next turn. I am the we'll have Naga, or Ashura move over and break this healing tower. Why not? Maria can jump further over. Dance not there Ashura over here future. to pick up this Aether Pot. What is and your we'll desire? just move Naga here and say go. And with triangle attack enabled and all of his attack buffs online, he shouldn't have any problem killing Edelgard here. Ready or not, here it comes. And down she goes. That was a fun match. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be a bit of a change of pace from all of the Claude antics so far, and that's going to give us a chance to actually see Morgan in action for the first time in a little while. They've got a neat little save ball strategy here going on with Fjorm and Hector acting as the bodyguards for a Catria, and more importantly, this Volk. I haven't seen many Volks on defenses yet, and I do think his he combos extremely well with Catria for a nearly unstoppable lethality if you try to tank this, since he prevents himself from being afflicted by guard effects, and also gives himself special acceleration per attack. They've also got a Dew Dorothea, and a Thraceer, and Ceres with Wings of Mercy to help follow up if someone doesn't quite get knocked out, usually Volk. Impact makes him surprisingly bulky. I'm going to take a pretty aggressive approach to this match and see if we can't get this done. Starting on turn one, but hopefully without actually closing out the match, since we do want to pick up both of these ether pods. We're going to start by having Naga move up and break this structure, and then we'll let Gunther move forward and break this one. And that well, gives Plumeria an aerobatics option to move forward here. Hmm. Morgan is going to move over and break this first pot. We're not going to dance him. And Mira's position here also means that everybody in this combat area is always going to take an extra minus five attack penalty, which is good. Okay. Helps Morgan survive there a little bit more. One future. We'll smite him forward here, thanks to ground orders. What's the plan? And then have him move in and just take down Fjorm. She doesn't actually have Ice Moon charged yet, since it's only the first turn, so when it activates here, it's a little bit too late. Then from there, Plumeria can jump forward and dance him, and we'll have him move in and knock out Catria. Now, the hope here is that Thrace here, since she won't be able to do damage to Morgan, will prefer to rally instead of attacking. But there's a chance that the panic effect interferes with that, and it's not something I've actually done too much testing on. So we'll see. We might miss one pot if that's what happens. Oh good, she is rallying. That's helpful. Yep, and another rally. Sarah should attack first. And she can do some damage and actually survive here, since we didn't get to give Morgan a dragon slaying buff. But there aren't any Checkmate. more dances, and she's still stuck in her corner, so there's not really any problems with that. Volk moves next, but Morgan stat checks him very handily and one-shots him for the effort. And since Morgan's damaged here, Hector doesn't actually get any parts of his weapon online, Just as I and all he really does is heal Morgan before going down. From here, it should be pretty easy to close things out by just letting Morgan finish off Saros. Go 
for Close Denson. And have him take down Thracer. We'll be able to enemy phase Dorothea without any problems at all, so that lets the rest of the team just work on picking up these pots so before we watch the fireworks. And down she goes. Just as I planned. He also gets to go back to full health here, which is a nice way to close things out. This match should be a fun one, and the much-delayed debut of this sort of melee-focused Corrin build that I've been trying to put to use for a little while now. They have a pretty neat ranged squad here, including this maxed-out duo Alphalons. I haven't seen much of him in a long time, and I do think he's still pretty solid on the defense, since he's a pretty bulky blue mage, and it's easy enough to enable a special to enable his weapon. Even if it's not open in the future, a, something like Moombo or Ruptured Sky can work really well for him, since he can just guarantee enabling it with time spells. They're backing him up with a Bernadetta and Sarah trap, and combined with two dancers in Olivia and Micaiah, basically guarantees that she'll be able to get her action which then lets her flip this duo Alphonse forward to try to nuke something. The infantry pulses from Olivia, Micaiah, and Sarah also enable a precharged Luna from Thracier, which lets her hit extremely hard, and she can get access to a lot of unexpected targets thanks to some mobility from Wings of Mercy, which I think they're counting on Alphonse or Bernadetta to survive one round of combat and get into a Wings of Mercy range, since they have a lot of potential follow-up actions from either of them surviving. The Kia staff health pool is a little awkward here though, since it's really only ever going to hit Thracier, assuming the entire team is debuffed. So that can make it a bit tricky to enable it for someone like Alphonse, or specifically Bernadetta, who would really be able to make use of that buff. I don't think we're going to have too many problems with this team, we should be able to Get things going without too many problems. I am going to take advantage of our safety fence just to take a moment to set up. And then oh, I'll do it. I'll hmm? just move everybody over a little I'll bit. Protect you. And say go. I am going to need to make do a little bit of chuckling with buffs to make sure that the Sprite Shrine isn't hitting Fiora, since mm. she and Corrin actually share an attack speed total right now. It makes it a little awkward since Fiora doesn't yes? want to have that debuff while Corrin absolutely does. Which way so from go? here we're going to have Corrin reposition Ashura forward. It also tests this heavy trap for us, it's fake. Got a plan? Mirabilis is going to dance Corrin, which debuffs everything except Olivia with minus 5 attack. Then Ashra will you move forward and not attack Bernie, even though she'd have a very easy time one-shotting that. We're going Keep to let Bernadette forward. attack into Fjorm instead. And then we'll flip Ashra back, let Fjorm swap Nervous, and keep everybody safe from the ranged onslaught. And then we'll say go. <laughs> there comes the dance. And now we'll just move in to attack Fjorm. Micaiah does have effective damage, which lets her do a chunk of visible damage. But even though we aren't using a Mystic Boost seal for her, it's not enough to put her in too much danger. And well, Fonts is just not getting much done here. Yep. And Bernie moves in last. And is actually only going to heal Fiona. And then from there, Sarah actually does get to flip Thracer forward, which lets her get a Luna in on Fiona. 
but even with all of those bonuses going for her, it's not quite enough. Then Cyrus can't get anything done. From here, the match is a lot more straightforward, and we just want to make sure we pick up these ether pots before closing things out. Hmm. And we should be able to just let Corrin march forward. Why not? We'll dance her to make sure she keeps soaking this frame. Lady then we'll have Fjorm jump past her and swap her to the right. There is but we'll one Ashra future. Hmm? And Mirdellis. Yes. Start moving over here to help reach this second ether pod. And we'll say go. Cyrus is always going to just get eaten here. She doesn't have damage reduction on her side. And while she can do a chunk of damage here, Corrin, she can't avoid the one shot. And then Sarah moves in and. well, that's not going down well for her. Here, we're actually going to bait Olivia with Mirabilis. Keep moving forward. Corrin's just going to move here to give her only a very limited amount of attack range. I'll protect and we'll flip you. Flip Plumeria back to the left. I am the answer. Smite her. What is your desire? Flip Ashra forward. Oh, I'll and Plumeria can pick up the first ether pop. Olivia's never going to get anything done to me, boss, who's got color advantage, bonus week, and a tier 4 stance. Close and from your here, eyes. it's pretty easy to just break the second ether pot Which way to go? and have Corrin close out the match. Pretty straightforward one overall. That's fun seeing some of those units, so let's see what we get next. This match will be a fun one at the end of the week. It's a rematch, and they've got a very impressive duo Lin headlining their team, maxed out with a flirt and everything. She's very strong, and the mostly Kathleen setup they have isn't a terrible home for her, since with a rally and two dancers, she can catch someone off card pretty easily, and if she gets to attack, it can definitely wipe out a lot of opponents. They're backing that up with a young Arashal, who has a very useful flash effect that she can apply to the enemy frontline at the start of a turn, and this bonus week to Lysithia, Harmonic Lysithia, who, a lot like Lynn, is an extremely powerful colorless threat, and helps cover res instead of just relying on defense. Dio Seagard's here to help enable Dio's hindrance in case someone snipes Lin and tries to get away with it, and Lysithia is doing that too. And of course, a cavalry ranged answer is always a bit of a pain to deal with. And from the mythic side of things, they've got Mirabilis, and Duma, and Bonus Week Cirrus. The boots on Duma really help him to actually get out on the map, especially with the help of dancers. And the extra stats from Cirrus' Wings of Light can help him actually get some damage done if he makes contact. I am going to need to take a short moment to set this up, just to make sure that we don't have to deal with Larishal's odd recovery, since we can count on the safety fence to avoid their turn 1. So, what we're going to do is just take this first turn to open up this bottom left I'll protect corner. You. Close your eyes. Hmm. And there is but one future ready to start things off. It will be now done. we can pick up the seat pot so we don't have to worry about it later. Mm -hmm. And now we'll just finish this off. And we actually don't even need safety fence to avoid their turn one here, but it helps. We actually say that, but they might have set this up so that Seagard dances, since he's technically further away than Mirabilis, potentially. But that's okay. 
here we're going to dance Corrin specifically in this spot to make sure that we debuff their team with minus attack for this turn. Then we'll move Corrin up here. Yes. Move Asherit down a bit. Dance her. I move her over one more tile before letting Fjorm swap her and get her set of buffs. And then we'll leave Naga in the corner and say go. The first thing that should happen is that Mirabilis dances, followed by Lynn attacking into Fjorm, which will do quite a bit of damage. But it's not enough to crack Fjorm, and she does still have enough health to make it through the rest of this enemy phase, assuming I've done my math correctly. Seagrub can do a chunk as well. But it just barely outpaces Fjorm's healing, and Larishal shouldn't be able to punch through it at all. Oh, maybe a little bit. That's okay. 21 health is still alive, and Fjorm's still more than able to keep going. We did a pretty good job of narrowing out the threats on their team, but this Lysithia is still a little spooky, and we don't want to end the match until we get to the second ether pot. So, we're going to take it a little slowly. Keep we'll moving move Corrin over one tile to intercept Duma and Seros. Then we're going to have Ashra wait yes. in place, Close your eyes. and be very careful to make sure that Fjorm isn't going to end up soaking the structuring this turn. I am the answer. We'll move her over. Got a plan? Mirabilis dance her. There and then we'll smite Mirabilis down. Yes. And use Guidance to work Fjorm right into here where Lysithia can't attack her directly. What then is we can move Naga over a tile and say go. Nope. Duma moves in first, but. But Corrin's not going to have any problems one shotting him. And he's not really going to get much damage done to her either, which actually just lets her start healing. I said he also shouldn't be able to do much to fuel him here, and really should end up just healing her. A lot like Mirabilis jumping in to do nothing to Corrin except heal. Yep. And Lysithia should attack last. I'm surprised she didn't attack earlier, because she is doing more damage than Mirabilis did. But I guess she also has a lot more health to lose. I mean, Cerus can't reach us. Yes? And now that we're down to just Cerus, we're going to take a slightly convoluted approach to make sure we pick up this Aether Pot mm. this turn, and close out the match. We have a gravity trap. I kind of expected that, since it, this is protecting the spot Linja was standing your on. Eyes. But that's okay. We can just Which flip Corrin further up. Or dance Corrin, which lets her move further up, and flip Asher up to that pot. That a plan? And sadly, Cyrus is gravity, so we don't Which actually get to knock her out here, but that's okay. We'll wait one more turn. Yes. And from here, we're just going to ignore the Dark Shrine hitting Corrin here. Smite her down. Mm. Move her over to the right to block Ceres. Why not? And then we'll just dance her. Yes. To make absolutely sure you. that Ceres is never getting anything relevant done. And then negating Fang should be enough for the one shot here. Down she goes. That was a fun match. Had to do a lot of planning before that started to make sure the, that Fjorm could tank her way through that, but it worked out well. This match will be a fun way to close out the week. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I saw this as the lead unit on the defense that I'm rematching here, but 
I, this is a very, very amusing little meme team. They're not really threatening much, it's for the most part a giveaway, as long as you don't underestimate Leaf and Duma. But it's still fun, and I'll accept this as a freebie. I don't have as much time as I'd like to end the week here, so... I'm not really expecting this to give us too many problems, though. Should be pretty straightforward What's with this? Claude and Catria. Close your eyes. It will be done. Got a plan? There is just get one everybody in sure position and get things started. Wait next for time. me. Demons of evil goes off. Not really going to concern us too much. I am we'll just the swipe the mirror forward here to give her access this? to Claude after he demolishes Doom. Oh, and then we'll I'll just let him it. start picking off the healers. Sure thing. Reese's. <sighs> Not much here is going to actually threaten Claude once he's getting going. What is your desire? So chilly. What's we are this? going to end up taking some damage after this as Amo gets his pain attack, I but back down. it should be the only damage Claude takes except for the upheaval from Duma earlier. To be so by his not side. too worried about it. Zama. Doesn't actually do anything outside of the post combat damage and gets himself one shot at first trouble. And then they just shuffle around. Let's go. And then we'll just let Claude move in. Finish off Lucius. Leave. Now. Why not? And then dance him. Not move Katri in here choice. to enable triangle attack. What's this? And let him close out the week. Ha! <laughs> I don't see too many defenses like that. It's a different way to close things out for the week. It was a fun season overall though. That last match was kind of a giveaway, but we had some fun stuff earlier on in the week, and I actually got to let Morgan have some time to shine, and Corin too, and Fjorm. So, Claude did take the spotlight though. We got a lot of work done with him this week, and it's great to see him in action. Next week should be a lot of fun. I'm planning to let Ash be the highlight of all of the matches, if possible, and I expect there to be some pretty degenerate nonsense going on overall. We'll see. It should be a fun time. I do have a Discord channel, there's a link in the description if you'd like to hang out and chat or get updates on video schedules, and there's also a Patreon page there if you'd like to help support the channel. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, good luck with your own matches, and I'll see you next time.